subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Okay people, so we discussed uh, basic problems for from this topic percentages in the previous video. Now in this video we discussed some level 2 questions from the same topic. So uh, these questions are basically a bit tricky, they might take a uh, much more time. So what you can do is you can just remember some tricks, some formulas, some shortcuts to solving these questions and uh, that would make it easier and take less time right so look at the first question that we are looking here so they say that a man's wages were decreased by 50 percent first then uh, the final wage the final amount was increased by 50 percent they are asking you the total loss that he suffered right so we saw when we saw the basics of this percentages we saw that there is a formula to find the final wages right so uh, i'm writing that directly using that directly final wages of the man are going to be if its initial wages were suppose A, then firstly he got a decrement of 50%. Decrement of 50% means I am going to put a negative sign here, 1 minus 50%. Then his wages were increased by 50%, which means I am going to put a positive sign here. Now if you just find it, this is going to be 1 minus 0.5, that is 0.5. It is going to be 1 plus 0.5, so this is 1.5. Right, if you perform this is going to be 0.75a. So if you see his, his original wages were a, now they have reduced to 0.75a which means a decrease of 0.25 or in percentages you can say that a total loss of 25% he has suffered. Right now if you solve this uh, question same question by conventional method what do you do? You first consider that he had a wage of a percent right a a some amount a. Then you find his decreased wage a dash you are going to find which is going to be a minus 50% of a that is 0.5 a. Then what do you do? Reduced wages were increased by 0.5% so what do you do? A double dash you find which is going to be 0.5 a plus 50% of 0.5 a. Right, all this calculation you do. Then you subtract a from this and uh, do all this okay. So this is going to take up a lot of time. Better you just remember this. We've discussed this when a value of a commodity or population of area, any any value decreases and increases successively with some different percentages. We can just do this. Okay, if it is decreasing, you put a negative sign. If it is increasing, you put a positive sign. And one minus x person, one plus y person, one minus z person, whatever you just perform this multiplication and final value you can obtain like this right so if you just use this thing you're going to get answer very quickly we saw that finally uh, it has reached 2.75a which means 25 percent decrease has occurred from the initial wages right now look at this next question they've given that a side of a square is increased by 30 percent so area is going to increase by how much they're asking right see when you get questions like this fine they're asking about the area percentage increase in area we need to consider so i'm going to take values uh, as such that area initially becomes 100 see even if you do not do that even if you solve it conventionally you consider one side to be a right so one side initially was a then area initially would have been a square now what happens what happens when this area gets increased by 30 percent which means 0 0.3 is going to increase so side becomes side is going to become 1.3 a area is going to be if you just square it you obtain 1.69 a square now clearly you see that this is 0 0.69 more than this and if you uh, see in percentage this is 69 percent more right but uh, if you any chance you get confused here what you can do is since they are asking the answer in percentage only what I can do I can consider side to be 10 so area becomes 100 fine now again when 30 percent increment occurs then this side is going to be 30 percent of 10 is going to be 3 so side becomes 13 and area becomes 169 so now you see clearly that this increases by 69 percent okay consider some values if you're comfortable with this a very nice if you're not consider some values which account for tens or hundreds is it it is easy to operate with such values okay that is why i advise again and again that whenever you're considering some values consider in powers of tens or hundreds right so this is how you solve this kind of question
So in a fraction, numerator is increased by 25% and denominator is diminished by 10%. New fraction is 5 by 9 and they are asking you to find the original fraction. See, uh, one thing that I would advise you is whenever you are watching videos of aptitude, just uh, try to follow one thing. First video you watch completely, okay, where uh, basics have been explained. You watch that video completely. Whenever you are looking at videos of practice questions, uh, try to first just look at the question, pause the video, try to solve the question and then you just check if your solution was right, if answer was right. Right, so you can practice along watching videos, okay, because uh, you will watch the theory video first, then you watch practice questions, then you practice questions yourself. So you can save a little bit of your time if you just practice questions along with me teaching, okay. Fine, so they are saying that there is a fraction in which, so you already know a fraction has a numerator and a denominator, right. Suppose if this is a fraction x by y, this x is known as a numerator and this y is known as a denominator. Now what do they say, numerator was increased by 25%, right, so and the denominator was diminished, diminished means decreased by 10%, so new fraction was 5 by 9, fine. Now see, when this numerator is increased by 25%, what it is going to become? Initially it was x, 25% increase means it is going to become 1.25 into x, fine. It was 1, 1 x, right, 1 into x, 25% increase means 0.25 increase which is which makes it 1.25 x. Denominator was diminished by 10% which means 1 minus 10% or 0 0.9 into y. Now they say that this new fraction, new fraction, this, this 1 obtained was equal to 5 by 9, right. So they are asking you the original fraction that is they are asking you for the value of x by y. So okay, I am just removing this decimal. So here you get 25, this cancels out. So what do you get x by y is going to be equal to 2 by 5, right. So this was my original fraction, fine. Right, so look at this question, 40 quintals is what percent of 2 metric cents. So basically I just took this question to uh, tell you the relation between quintals and metric tons, some of you might not know. So basically what happens is one quintal, one quintal is equal to 100 kgs, okay there are 100 kgs in one quintal and in one metric ton it has 1000 kgs or you can say 10 quintals. So one metric ton is equal to 10 quintals. Fine, now this question is uh, actually not very important, just to tell you this concept I took this question. So they are asking you that 40 quintals, 40 quintals is what percent of 2 metric tons, 2 metric tons, you need to have percent so you put a 100, uh, so right, see whenever you are finding percentages these two quantities need to be comparable only you can find per percentage only you can compare when these two quantities have same units this is quantity this numerator has units of quintals this has units of metric tons you cannot compare okay you cannot find percentages either you convert both of them to quintals or metric tons or kgs grams whatever but they need to have same units okay you cannot find how much percent is 40 meters of 2 kg that does not make sense the two the two things ha need to have same units so I am considering uh, quintals here so I leave it as it is if I need to convert this into quintals I want to multiply this with uh, 10 so become 20 quintals into 100 so this is going to be 200 percent okay answer is going to be 200 percent so this was a very easy question just to tell you the relation between these two I have uh, considered this question. So look at this question now they say that there was an examination in which you have to score 45 uh, percent marks at least to pass. Uh, now one student he scored 178 but still he failed by 22 marks and they are asking you for total marks or maximum marks. See as you start reading this just try to solve the uh, form the equation I will tell you how see these words these words are useless okay we do not need these just come here a student has to secure 40 percent marks to pass 40 percent of marks 40 percent of total of course right so I have considered this total to be 100 so 40 percent of x was needed now he gets 178 he got 178 right but failed by 22 failed by 22 means if he had uh, if he scored 22 marks more he would have passed 
which means if I add 22 to this number, if he had 22 more marks, he would have passed, which means that this total score would have been equal to 40% of x. Only then a student can pass, right? So just uh, th these are the maximum marks that is you need to find x. So this is how you can form equation as you go along the question, right? Now you just solve this simply. If you add, this is going to be 200 in 200 by 40. So if you solve this, you're going to get this total marks at 500. So uh, maximum marks for this examination were 500. Right? This is what they're asking. So consider this next question now. They've given that there is a village where 5 by 9th part are uh, males. And out of those males, some of them are married. They're asking you to calculate the percentage of unmarried females. Right? See. When you look at this fraction 5 by 9, see this fraction can create some problems in calculations, okay. So what do I do when I consider total population, population of town? What do I do? I consider population to be, see they are asking you the answer in percentages, okay. They want you to calculate percentage of something. So when they are asking you to calculate percentages, when you are not asked about an absolute value, you can always consider values according to yourself because ultimately when you ca uh, calculate the percentages, this, uh, this this considered value is going to cancel out anyway, right? Because you're going to calculate in reference to those values. So it does not matter what value you consider. See here, considering population to be 100 won't also help. Why? Because we are given a fraction of 5 by 9. This is a very odd fraction. So it is better you consider population to be such a number that this value simplifies. Right, what can that number be? If you just think, if you consider population to be 9 or 90 or 900, it is going to ease up things. But again, see, when you read this question, you see that there is, they, they talk about 30% of something. So, it is better to consider population to be 900. When you consider population to be 900, things are going to get simplified. Right, now I proceed from here. So, I have considered population to be 900. Okay, you get the logic why I did that. Now, they say that 5 ninth of this population are males. Right, so males. Males are going to be 5 by ninth part of this which means 500. So, obviously rest are going to be females. So, there are going to be 400 females in this town. Now, they say that 30% of these males are married. Now, married. 30% of this number is going to be 150, which leaves us with 350 unmarried men, right. Now see, why is this number important? Why have they given this information? Because they need you to find a number of unmarried females, percentage of unmarried. Now, in these females also, some would be married. If 150 males of a town are married, only 150 females are going to be married. We are considering a simple straight example, okay. So, uh, we are not considering any exceptions for now. So, 150 men were married. So, 150 females are also going to be married, which leaves us with 250 unmarried females, okay. And you were required to calculate percentage of unmarried females in total population. So, if you just calculate this percentage, it is going to be 250 upon total population was 900 into 200. So this gives you 250 by 9 or if you solve it, you are going to get I guess 27, 7 by 9 percent. Right. So this is going to be the required percentage, so percentage of unmarried female. See, there is one more approach on solving this. You consider total population to be x. Then again, you do the same thing, 5 by 9 x. Then you find this one, subtract from this. Uh, but I believe this approach is way easier. Why? Because uh, you get real numbers. So, one uh, pr problem that is solved is calculation mistakes are less likely to occur. Because uh, when you are operating with these kind of simple numbers, you are less likely to uh, commit any calculation mistake. Uh, other than that, it, this calculation with these numbers becomes easy, right? It becomes fast. So, I'd recommend you just whenever you are asked answer in terms of percentage, just assume some number. Assume some number that simplifies your calculation. 100 is not a must to assume every time. Assume some number which simplifies your calculations, right? 
Okay, so look at this question now. They've given that a school has three classes, which has 40, 50, and 60 students, and uh, 10, 20, and 10 percent of these students pass respectively. Now they're asking you the pass percent of the school. Now, when you need to find pass percent of the school, what do you need to find is how many students passed in total upon total number of students, right? So, pass percent can be find found by finding total uh, number of students that pass upon total number of students. Right, so you can just find number of students passed respectively. 10% students of 40, 10 by 100 into 40, which makes it 4. So, 4 students pass from this class, 20% of 50 is 10, so 10 students from this class have passed, and 10% of 60, which means 6 students pass from this class. Now, total number of students is going to be 40 plus 50 plus 60, which is 150 into 100, right? This is how you find percentages. So now if you just calculate this, this is going to be 20 by 150 into 100, uh, which is I guess 40 by 3 percent or 13. Fine, so this is the past percent of the school. All uh, right, so instead of finding all these values separately then adding and doing this i'd suggest that you do this in one step okay read the question carefully just find values and put this directly into this so that saves time now look at this question they are given that uh, a student appeared for three examinations biology math and drawing and they've given you the marks in drawing and they're saying uh, they're asking you to find his maths marks in maths they have also given you some relation. Fine. See, uh, since these three subjects have initial letters as different, just assume variables to be same. Okay. Do not do see that saves time. Just saves time. You consider marks in bio to be B. This is M. This is D. So what do they say? Marks in bio, which means B, is is means equal to 20 less than less than means minus 20 less than 25 percent of 25 by 100 of Total marks in bio, maths and drawing. Total marks means B plus M plus D. Fine. And also they have given that marks in drawing are 50. So you can just replace this D by 50. The value of this D is 50. Now they are asking you for to find ma marks in maths. Now see one basic rule that you need to remember is if there are three variables you need at least three equations. Right. So here first equation this, this you can say this is our first equation. Second equation would be D is equal to 50 since they have given you marks in one of the subjects they you do not have any other equation to solve equations to solve problems of three variables you need at least three equations we have only two equations so this is not possible to be solved even if you put d is equal to 50 here you're going to get a relation in uh, b and m if they had given options in terms of marks of bio okay still you could have answered they're asking you for the absolute value of marks in maths so that cannot be determined why because maths and bio marks in bio are not known also we do not have any other relation between these variables so answer is going to be cannot be determined see i took this question to clear two things first thing is three equations at least you need to solve a uh, the problem in three variables second thing is sometimes uh, we've seen that they're, they're, they give this last option as cannot be determined none of these or something like this students do not attempt okay students do not take this kind of option because there is a myth that uh, they, you have to get some absolute answer. What do you people do? You are going to put values and check and do some some sort of arrangement and take one of the answers. It is not necessary that every question has an answer. Okay. Sometimes there are going to be problems that cannot be solved or whose answer is not in the options. So do not hesitate to take this cannot be determined on none of these or options like this. Fine. Answer can be, can be this kind of option also. So, since we have only two equations and three variables, they cannot be solved and marks in maths cannot be determined. Fine, so answer is going to be option D. Right, so look at this question now. They are given that there is a certain quantity of pure milk which was taken and then each time they reduced, they replaced the mixture by 20% of water. So, they repeated this process three times. Now, they are asking that at the end, how much uh, milk is there in that mixture? 
Fine, so we've seen this kind of problems. What do we do? This is actually depreciation in value only. We've seen that when uh, value of a commodity decreases by same rate again and again. What do we do? We derived this formula for population or something. So, uh, amount of milk I am considering as M dash final value. Suppose initially it was M. Now first time it was reduced by 20%. Then again they did this by 20%. This value got reduced by 20%. So it's going to be multiplication by 20%. 1 minus 20 by, uh, by 100. Again this, this complete value got reduced by 20%. So this is what's going to happen. Now if you just see this is actually 0.8. So what I what do I get? I get 0.8 cube into M. Right. They are asking you uh, per in percentage in terms of percentage. So what do you do? If you calculate this, this is going to be 0.512 M. Right. So the final value has become this much of uh, the initial value. From here also you can see if you find try to find this in percentages. Uh, what do you do m dash by m into 100 right this is how you find percentage so just divide this by m and multiply with 100 so you get 51.2 percent pure so finally the milk is going to be only 51.2 percent pure right see if you consider some value okay you consider that initially there was 100 gram milk 1000 gram milk then what do you do you replace 20 percent of it you will be left with 80 grams milk then again you find 20 percent which is 64 and then again you replace then also you're going to get the same answer but it may take a little bit of time if you use this formula or this shortcut you're going to get answer very quickly so i'd recommend using this uh, but anyway, if you forget, you have your concepts clear, right? You consider that there was initially 1000 gram or 100 gram milk. Each time you keep on subtracting 20%, right? And then in the end, you see how much milk you are left with. Fine, again, you're going to get the same answer then also. See, these kind of questions are going to be asked very frequently. Mixtures, questions which mix two concepts, okay? Uh, this mixes uh, the concept of mixture and allegations and also percentages. So, uh, examiners are very much interested in asking questions which uh, mixes two three concepts so see I've put a star here you pay special attention to these kind of questions one who mixes sets and percentages mixtures and percentages wherever there is mixture of two three concepts they are more interested in asking such questions so this is an important question just keep in mind